if you believe that the pathological narcissist in your life was trying to push you to unalive yourself, then this would be a correct assessment. And this is because pathological narcissists are often sadistic. And sadism is getting pleasure from humiliating or harming others. So you could have a narcissistic parent, a narcissistic intimate partner, could be a narcissistic sibling, boss, coworker, business partner, etc. They oftentimes are very sadistic. And this is what you hear being referred to as the malignant narcissist because NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, often overlaps with antisocial personality disorder, ASPD, that which you may commonly call sociopathy or psychopathy. So you could be dealing with a narcissistic sociopath or a sociopathic narcissist or a psychopathic narcissist because they will meet the criteria for NPD which means that they have five or more of the traits listed in the DSM and they bleed over into ASPD. So you're dealing with very lawless, oftentimes violent, vindictive, and malignant individuals. They get off on your pain. And oftentimes you will see where they will provoke drama and instigate chaos and they will have a micro smile, a little smirk, or a Cheshire-like cat grin on their face, just like the Grinch. And this is because they are feeding on your pain. So know that narcissists are right next to the sociopaths. They're often sociopathic. And sociopaths are narcissistic. So know that you could be dealing with a narcissistic sociopath, again, a malignant narcissist. And the reason why they are pushing you to harm yourself is because if you do this, they can run off and go and play the victim. And this victim identity gets them narcissistic supply. And a narcissistic supply is the attention, admiration, validation, and the reflection that they get from other people. So know that there really are three roles that a narcissist can play. And this is victim abuser or hero and they play all of these roles in varying capacities to get narcissistic supply so they will try to push you to unalive yourself behind the scene and then in public they will pretend to be a benevolent figure and again this is their mask because narcissists only care about their facade they care about the pretense they care about the masks that other people see but again behind the scenes they will be very abusive very toxic and very vindictive people so know that when we are talking about narcissism oftentimes we are talking about narcopathy again it is narcissism and sociopathy or psychopathy combined because energy is a spectrum and narcissism narcissistic personality disorder is right next to Anti-social personality disorder. Similarly, fear is right next to anger. In a snap, someone can go from fear to lashing out. And this is anger, right? This is rage. Energy by default operates on a spectrum. Light is a spectrum. On one end, we say it's light. And on the other end, we say it's darkness. Sound is a spectrum. On one end, we're going to say this is a loud sound. And on the other end, we're going to say this is a soft sound. So as you heal, it is important to understand how to discern the living from the dead because the dead are the people that will try to push you to unalive yourself. And this is because they are as close to being dead as you can get. So physically they are walking around, but again, behind that physical veil, these people are losing their minds. They are losing control of their will. This is why they are very compulsive and impulsive. And they also do not have very strong control of their emotions because they're based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. 
They do not have access to courage. They do not have access to love. They do not have access to empathy. They do not have access to peace and so on. And at the spirit level, these individuals dissociated in childhood. So they dissociate from, they dissociated from their true spirit, their true selves in childhood, and they adopted a false self or a mask. And the mask is what hides the evil spirit. The mask is the pretense. The ego is the pretense to hide the darkness within. So understand that if you are around someone, for example, and you start feeling drained, then you know that that person is close to death. Because if you go around someone and this individual, for example, is in a vibrant state, they're very happy-go-lucky, they're very cheerful, you will see where you will take on that cheerfulness and your spirits will rise. Conversely, if you go around someone that is a low vibration being, eventually you will pick up on that low vibration energy. And this is where you get things like suicide or suicidal ideation coming in. Because again, that is the vibration that they are at. So at a level of awareness, it is important that you learn how to identify these individuals because the dead will want you to feel like the dead. People can only give you what they have. If you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. If you squeeze a grape, you get grape juice. So the dead cannot make you feel alive. Pathological narcissists are walking black holes. They are walking voids. All they do is consume life force energy. And this is because they are dying inside. Pathological narcissist people are the trees that snapped in the wind and because of this they also want you to snap and this is actually why they hate you this is why they envy you because they really are wondering how did you not break from all of the abuse and torture and neglect that you have received they do not know how you are able to revive your energy. They do not understand how you are able to resuscitate yourself. They also want you to disconnect from your spirit. And this is why it feels like you're losing yourself in relationships with these individuals, because this is exactly what is happening. They are trying to break you at your core. So understand that narcissistic abuse is spiritual warfare. And understand that you are spirit governing a human body with the access to tools, namely your mind power, your willpower, and your emotion. So these individuals are trying to break you at your core. So when they attack you at the spirit level, then everything else will eventually also be compromised, right? If someone attacks you at the spirit level, then eventually your mind is going to take a hit. Eventually, your emotions are also going to be over the place, all over the place. And eventually, your will is going to take a hit. And this is why it feels like you are losing your will to live. And again, this is where the unaliving comes in. This is where the suicidal ideation comes in. So it is important that you learn how to discern the living versus the dead. The dead feel like the dead. The dead act like the dead. The living act like the living and the living feel like the living. So the next time you go around someone, check your energy. Does it feel like your energy is being drained? Does it feel like this person is pouring into you as if they are boosting you up? That is how you know the living versus the dead. And here's the thing, kind people. You should not be communing with the dead because if you commune with the dead, then you will eventually start feeling like the dead because that is the vibration that you are tapping in and this tapping into. And this is why you hear me state often that you have no business in the third dimension, right? You descended past the third dimension, past the second dimension. You actually ended up in the first dimension. You ended up in hell, people with the pathological narcissist. So whether this is a narcissistic parent or a narcissistic intimate partner, some people are dealing with narcissistic siblings and so on. These individuals only have the capacity to drain the life force out of you because at a spirit level, people, these individuals are black holes. 
black holes are dying stars. It is a collapsed star. It is a star that is losing its light. And because they have lost their light, then they will also want you to lose your light. If you continue to pour into a narcissist, you are pouring into a black hole. And this is why your energy eventually is left drained. This is why you feel so lethargic and sleepy and tired around these individuals because they are draining your energy. You are interacting with a black hole. They are a void. And this is why when you pull your energy, they lose their minds because they are feeding on you just like a parasite. So if you are ready to rewrite your story, let's connect. I can help to take you from A to Z on how to heal properly from narcissistic abuse. And here's the thing, people, if you do not address those childhood wounds adequately, what you will see happen is you'll attract other narcissists unknowingly. And this is because with that wound, it's very similar to a bleeding fish in the ocean. So all of a sudden you're seeing sharks around you and you don't know why they're there. They're there because you have a wound, you are bleeding. So I've been where you are, lost, confused, and seeking a way out. And healing from narcissistic abuse is absolutely possible, but you have to get the accurate information and take action on that information. So again, if you're ready to rewrite your story, let's go ahead and connect, go ahead and book a session. All of the links for these are on the page. So remember, you are not alone. Your strength is limitless, but you have to take time to heal and revitalize your energy. And when you revitalize your energy, when you reconnect with spirit, when you get back in tuned with yourself, then you will see where you're going to be making much better decisions that are in your best interest and also in the best interest of others around you. So in closing, all of your love, kindness, and compassion, go ahead and pour that back into yourself. This is how you revitalize your energy. If you're pouring into a pathological narcissist, regardless of their title, could be a narcissistic parent, people could be a narcissistic intimate partner. If you are pouring into a narcissist, you are pouring into a black hole. It is important that you learn how to discern spirit, learn how to discern the dead from the living. Do not commune with the dead. You bury the dead. Get that corpse off your back. Leave the dead in the third dimension where they belong because that is the vibration that they are at. And what you do is you get the courage to walk away and stay away. And that is where your transformation begins because when you get the courage to walk away and stay away, people, you are standing in your power. That is when you get your power back. Again, you are not alone. I've got your back and all of the other people in these comment sections also have your back because we're all on our healing journey. And that really is the message for today. Kind folks, thank you all for your continued support. Ensure that you are liking these videos. Ensure that you're sharing these videos with someone that you think may need this information. Ensure that you are subscribed for more empowering content. Sheikah is the name. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video.